everyone, it's Rena again. So I'm going to do a video about the new moon in Aries that's happening on March 27th and it's going to be in 957 Central Standard Time. So if you live in Europe it's going to be actually on the 28th in the early morning hours and don't even ask me if you live in Australia or something. I have no idea. Maybe it's going to be the 29th for all I know. But um, in any case, it's going to be a important turning point because it is following the vernal equinox on the 20th of March, which is the time when the sun goes into Aries. It's the astrological new year. And it is considered a time of rebirth. Now, I was thinking about talking about this earlier today, and I was thinking, what about if you live in Australia or other places in the Southern Hemisphere? Like, does it feel like the year is actually dying because you're coming up on winter? I just associate March with rebirth and spring. So there has to be a rebirth for you as well because this is the beginning of the zodiac wheel. So the wheel is always spinning. We're always going through another cycle and this is the beginning of the cycle. Now what makes this very significant is that we have the sun in Aries, the moon in Aries, Mercury in Aries, Venus in Aries, and Uranus in Aries. And Uranus is like this, you know, outer planet that is very erratic in its influence. It's very nonconformist. So can you imagine it being in Aries? That is like gasoline on fire. Because Aries um, is a sign that's a pioneer. It's a sign, it's the first sign, so it's like me first. When you see Aries children, they may try to push their way to the front of the line. They may want to be uh, number one, very competitive. Aries is a fire sign. It's also a cardinal sign. Cardinal signs are all about taking action. So this is a time when people may feel like they're chomping at the bit, like something has to give. And so I was thinking, wow, is this going to be actually a very volatile situation? But there are some good aspects because Mars is in Taurus. And Taurus is very pokey. It's very reluctant to take action initially. It kind of likes to look around and see what's happening before it decides on a course of action. Aries is very impulsive. So having Mars in Taurus at this time helps to kind of slow things down so that we may be very energized, but we are not necessarily going to do foolish things as a result of this energy. And another great thing about Mars at this time is that it is making a nice angle, a trying to Pluto, which happens to be in Capricorn. And so this can lead to very constructive activities that have the potential for long-term regeneration because Pluto is all about healing, but it's also transformation. And it's in that transform, what would you say transformative process? In the process of transformation, things can get a bit messy because it's like if you're doing a gut rehab, you know, you have to tear everything down first before you can hope to have it um, rebuilt. So the same applies for people's 
lives, you know, when they're trying to take action, they want to take action that's constructive, and yet at the same time that it's actually going to change things. And so this could have the potential for long-lasting change on the positive level. The other thing that I find very interesting about this configuration is that we have a, let me see, is this a conjunction? We have a conjunction between Mercury and Uranus. And this is why I decided to call this um, new moon out of the matrix and into the fire. The fire part being self-explanatory with the Aries, but the Uranus energy is associated with thinking for oneself, being completely individualistic and original. And Mercury is the way that we think. So it is going to be about people not believing what is, you know, being thrown at them because they realize that it may be done by design in order to lower their vibration, to create the sense of dependency on someone or something else outside of them, and they're not hearing it, and they're going to reject more and more these so-called authorities. And I'm talking specifically about the media because the media is our form of communication. Now this can include internet, by the way. And we used to say, well, you know, the TV is this indoctrination, but don't, you know, lose your sense of, don't let down your guard when you're on the internet because very easily there can be people who, you know, portray themselves as certain things, as experts, as this or that, and they may be feeding you disinfo as well. Do your own research. Don't just trust the, quote, mainstream, typical authorities because they've already been exposed as having an agenda. I mean, the WikiLeaks is a perfect example of that. So, and that was taken from their own emails of things they were doing to conspire against, you know, certain situations and what, you know, there's, there was something else too. Oh yeah, and then we have the WikiLeaks that talk about how these uh, electronic devices can spy on people. So again, something is presented to you as being, you know, so helpful to you and all this stuff, and there may be a hidden motive. And it's not to generate paranoia within you, but to just remind you that when somebody presents something to you, like if they're trying uh, to sell you something, <laughs> even if it doesn't have a price tag, that there may be something in it for them. And you should just really think carefully before just taking someone else's opinion on something. Um, what I was going to say too is that there is a square between the Sun and Saturn as well as the Moon and Saturn. So Saturn represents Big Daddy. And I think the government is a perfect uh, symbol for Big Daddy. But any authority figures with the Sun Square that we want to have our own individuality. We do not want somebody telling us who we are and what we feel with the Moon Square Saturn. We may feel the sense of oppression by these outer forces. And it's up to us to understand that we are sovereign souls. It doesn't matter. Yes, of course, there are people trying to keep us in some kind of a prison. But the worst kind of prison is in your own mind where you really feel a sense of limitation. So just realize that as soon as you're a free thinker, I think everything else follows. And I wanted to read to you something from Jane Spiller who wrote a book about new moon astrology. 
And this is a book, it's called Using New Moon Power Days to Change and Revitalize Your Life. And I got this off of Amazon, and I think I paid $4 altogether. It's really cool. You can buy used books very inexpensively if it's a reference book that you'll use over and over again. And I decided to purchase this. And so I just wanted to read some of the key words that she says about Aries. New beginnings, self-focus, innocence, authenticity, self-discovery, independence, courage, and I guess these would be kind of the shadow aspects, disengaging and self-absorption. I will say with the self-absorption that, you know, sometimes Aries people, not only the sun sign, maybe the moon sign and some other of the personal planets, get a reputation for that self-centeredness. And I think that that has some merit. I think all fire signs, including myself, being Sagittarius, have a tendency to be self-centered. But it's not the same as narcissism. Narcissism is thinking that you're better than other people and that their opinions don't count. Self-absorption or self-centeredness is simply being so interested in what you're doing that you don't necessarily want to deal with other people at all times. You, you're really into, you're very passionate about what you're doing. And I think we have to see the difference between those two things because I think fire signs can get harshly judged. But, you know, the point that all of this is making is that you may feel right now that you are on fire with ideas, that you have so many things that you want to do, so many goals that you want to set. And this is the time, you know, have a vision board. Look at, look at um, you know, create something that you can focus on for the coming year. This is, you know, the, it's interesting too because Aries rules the physical body being the first house. So you may have actual physical goals and you can create your wishes, your new moon wishes with this new moon and really see a lot of stick-to-itiveness because you are initiating something that is where there's a lot of this cardinal energy. And then you have Mars trining Pluto. So it can kind of give you that um, sustaining power. So anyway, just a few thoughts about that. And I'm going to pick, a, um, I think I'll pick two cards from my Morgan Greer deck. And I'm going to pick a couple of Oracle cards as well and see what they say. I'll pick three. 